Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you are well, you are blessed of the Lord. It is long since you hear from me. I'm a man who teaches what it is. The last topic was about recess. A short uh, break from our routine work. The importance of taking a break. And actually I also took the break so that I may come uh, vitalized, rejuvenated, refreshed, and more empowered to deliver the word of God in a way that is powerful to change the lives of our listeners. My name is Sonyango Eric. It is a great moment once again to be found in the presence of the Lord. Today I would like to talk about Bible. I would like to teach about Bible. What is Bible? Where did Bible came from? I once heard a boy who just, uh, he was a Christian, and he converted to Islam, and he was shouting, Bible is a wrong book, it's a, a lying book, and I was astonished. This boy lacks idea, lacks knowledge, lacks wisdom. He doesn't understand what he's talking about, because he doesn't know the Bible. Today I'd like to talk about what is Bible, so that you understand this book, so that you may appreciate this book, so that you may know why you should be reading your Bible. Because some people like uh, such, they speak out of ignorance. They don't know what they are talking about. That's why they go astray, because they don't know the power of the Bible. Today I'd like to talk about uh, a topic called Bibliology. Bibliology. Uh, bibliology is a word that is derived from Greek. Uh, called Biblos, meaning books. Books. Bible is a book. So, Biblos is a, a Greek word that signifies a book. Now, why do we... Uh, what brings it or bring the difference between Bible and other books? Here it is. Bible refers to A bibliology is a study of Bible as the written word of one true and living God. Bibliology is a study of the Bible as the written word of one true and living God. We talk about, uh, we talk about scripture. What is scripture? Scripture simply means it's a Latin word. Biblos is a Greek word. Scripture is a Latin word meaning, meaning to write. To write. Scripture, writing in a Latin word. There are, in this topic, there are seven uh, areas that we'll cover in bibliology. Number one is the revelation of the Bible, inspiration, inerrancy, canonicity, interpretation, application, and the structure of the word of God. The seven, revelation, inspiration, inerrancy, canonicity, interpretation, application, and the structure of the word of God. Let us now go to the revelation. Why the Bible is different from other books. Revelation, when you talk about revelation, it means that it's to unveil or to uncover to unveil or to uncover. The Bible un un unveil and uncover is the process whereby God makes himself known to mankind through the scripture, Jesus Christ, miracles, visions, dreams, and creation. Here is where God reveals himself, his nature, his uh, persona, his attributes, his works, his revelation, how he does things. This is where we call the revelation of the word. And another area that we cover in bibliology, I call it inspiration of the word. This is whereby is the process by which God used human author to record his word through the spirit inspired writing. 
You have to know this thing. God used individual, 40 people in numbers, to record or inscribe his word in the scripture. God used people who inspired through the Holy Spirit to know his will, to put down to jot what needed in our time. There is where the inspiration of the word. That's why the Bible is different because it was written by people who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. This human author, there are people who lived in our days. Unlike other religions, maybe like Quran. Quran, we realize that there were what we call adith. Uh, there are fiction. Someone sat and decided that, oh, I saw this thing. I saw this thing. I saw this thing and he decided to write. Like things like Al Book. Uh, there is a book called Al Bukhari. Al Bukhari in Arabic, in Quran, it talks about someone saw what is happening in heaven and they say that there are so many women in heaven and in hell. And when you read the Bible, you realize that the Bible revealed God. There are things that the Bible has not revealed to us. The people who are in heaven, we have, been, we have not been told the gender of male, more male or female. But we find that someone had a dream, a wet dreams. I can say maybe a wet dreams. And they say, oh, there are women there because there are so many women who are not obedient to their, uh, to their husband. Now they are in hell. And there are so many men, so many female in hell. And so many uh, females in heaven. And you ask yourself, the religion does not allow women to lead. How are they taking the front seat in heaven? These were the stories. But Bible, it is it was written from historic, real-time historic facts, ecological uh, facts. Archaeologists who are not Christians, they went and dug artifacts. They brought the debris and analyzed and realized that truly this thing really happened. The scrolls, they are there. We find that Bible, that is the inspiration, part of it, written by people who live on this earth. Real stories, not a death. Real stories. There's another one we call inerrancy of the word. Inerrancy of the word. This means that the Bible has no error. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no error. There is geographical truth in it. There is theological truth in it. There is historical issues in the Bible that they can be mapped. They can be seen. They can be observed. They have been studied. There is no error in the Bible. The Bible is the final authority in matters of faith, doctrine, and practice. The Bible takes precedence over traditions, over culture, and man-made doctrine. When you read the book of Mark chapter 7, you realize that there are a lot of human doctrine. But the Bible takes precedence. It is paramount. The Bible is the final say because there is no error in the Bible. There is no someone who can say that I made an error in the Bible because it was inspired. The authors were inspired by God to write the Bible. Another area that is very important to understand in the Bible, in this topic of uh, bibliology, I call it canonicity of the word. Canon, canonicity of the word. Hmm. The process of canonicity refers to the church recognition of divine origin and the authority of 66 books of the Bible. When we talk about canonicity, we talk about the content is verified and authentic word of God. There are so many people who are different versions, are different ideas, are different observations. But the authors, the com people who compiled the Bible, 
they were guided by certain principles. We call it canon, canon laws, canonicity. They were looking at what is verified and authenticity. That's why you'll find that there are books like uh, Mark. Mark was, his account was accepted because Mark was a friend to Peter. The records of Luke, the author of the book of Luke and the book of Acts, was accepted because they were easy to verify and uh, make it authentic because Luke was a friend to Apostle Paul. There are so many, uh, like a, a religion, Catholic, they have apocryphas. This book has a lot of books in it, not only 66, but you cannot consider them Bible because they were not verified, authentic, other books. So the 66 books are books that are authentic and verified. Very important to understand. We appreciate Bible because the 66 books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, up to Revelation, when you go through those scriptures, you can verify and authenticate them. Very key. The author's authority. The book must be written by the legitimate and recognized apostle or prophet. All these writers were the legitimate people. They are not story. They are not fiction. They are people who lived on this earth. They walk on, the, on these cities. Some cities have the name up to date. We can see that there are people who lived on earth. That's why there is authority on those books. The Old Testament content is reliable based on historic records, such as the discovery of the Dead Sea, uh, Dead sea Scrolls. These were found on caves. The Old Testament, you can relate to those scrolls. They were written by people who lived on this earth in 1947. This scroll made a very big milestone in the bibliology. They provided what you call Hebrew text from the second to first century before Christ. All the books except uh, the book of Esther were obtained were in those scroll. The 5,000 manuscripts also of the New Testament are very much authentic, verified, and justifiable. Another area that we need to understand in the topic of bibliology, I call it interpretation of the word. There is a topic that is attributed to interpretation of the word of God, the exegesis, how to interpret the word of God, how to divide the word of truth, how to understand the word of God. There is a book a topic called um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, Neotics. When you understand it, you will understand how to interpret the Bible. This is whereby we interpret the Bible in a way that it is understood to, the uh, to people who are studying it. You should approach the Bible without a, what you call pre-assumption, preception. Don't go there with your makujua, I know it all. You need to have a, a, a mind that is ready to absorb, to, start, to learn. You don't take a position before reading a Bible. You need to ensure that you have a mind that is ready to receive, to understand. Don't approach the word of God with a position in mind. Or traditional, or cultural influence. You want to interpret the Bible... Uh, based on your culture, based on your beliefs, based on your uh, idea, ideologies, there you will go wrong. You must understand what the author meant 
When you look at the book like the book of Song of Solomon, this book, many attribute it to the lovers. Most uh, wedding cards, they use those words. But we'll find that the author of that book was referring to the church, to the people of God, the love between God and the people, the tribe of Israelites. Like today, it is between God and the church. It was not based on human love. When you want to understand about human love, you go to the book of Corinthians, the book of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. You realize that they talk more about love of human. So when you have that mind of love of a, a man to woman passion, you'll go wrong. The other mind was about the love of God and the people of God. You need to do what we call a reflection of the word to us. What does the Bible apply to us? What is the reading of the word meant to us? The impact of the word of God in our lives and how do we apply it in our day-to-day -day lives? Very key when you are interpreting the Bible. To properly interpret the scripture, you should study it at a whole. Read the whole book, read the whole uh, chapter so that you may understand what the author meant, the audience, the theme of that book. You have to read the whole book and understand the intention of the author. When you read the book of, uh, for instance, the book of uh, Thessal uh, Thessalonians, it's a book that talks about resurrection. When you read the book of Romans, it teaches us about uh, faith, how to obtain faith, not through the works, but through grace, through God's mercy. When you read the book, maybe like uh, Matthew, you realize that God, Jesus there is interpreted or is revealed as the king. When you read the book of Mark, reveal Jesus as a miracle worker. When you read the book of Luke, it shows Jesus in a humanity form, in a human form. When you read the book of John, reveal Jesus as God. So you must understand this book in totality. The book of, uh, when you read the book of Psalms, it shows how the worship of God should be done. So you realize that all this book, they have that theme, that idea behind it. You should compare portions of scripture and portions of scriptures for you to understand what does this Bible talks about? What does this verse talk about? You have to re try to compare it with other scriptures. Study the historic and the cultural context. Some people are applying uh, the Judaism culture to date because they don't understand the timing. Where there is a day I will teach about understanding your time. The children of Issachar, they understood their time. So the Bible also, that is what we call Hebraism. Hebraism in the biblical time is how the Hebrew were talking. Like nowadays we call it slang or sheng. So you must understand the context at which the Bible was written. Study the content, the books, the chapter, the paragraphs, and the word for you to understand the scripture. Another area of bibliology, I call it illumination of the word. This one is the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit that empower, that enables believers to understand the truth and interpretation of the word of God. The Holy Spirit illuminates the mind of people, made them understand the scripture, the power behind the scripture. The Bible says the word of God is power. So it is God who reveals. 
The Bible says the eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, the heart has not received. Those who have been store for those who God has revealed. The eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, the heart has not received. Those who have been store for those who love him. So God is here is now the word revealing God, enabling us to understand what God has for us. When we read the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, the Bible says, Do your best to win full approval in God's sight as a worker who is not ashamed of his work, one who correctly teaches the message of truth. It is the Holy Spirit that can enable you to teach the message of the truth. Another important area of bibliology, I call it application of the word is to allow the Bible to speak to you personally. The Bible to reveal deep secret of God. The Bible to educate you, to encourage you, to convict you, to guide your life. All this can be found in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The intention of the word of God is to teach you, to rebuke you, to help you to, re uh, to get rid of the errors, the messes of our lives. To help us in godly living, the word of God. That's why you need the word of God. Because the word of God will teach you, will rebuke you, will correct you, will enable you to have what we call a holy living. Will enable you to understand. When you read that book, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, all scripture is inspired. That's why I talk about the inspired, inspiration of the word of God. All the scriptures are inspired. All the scriptures, all the 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament, they are all inspired word of God. The Bible says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful. Every verse is useful, even a comma. Even apostrophe, any word in the scripture is very useful. For what? For teaching the truth. For rebuking error. Nowadays, people don't want to be rebuked. When you tell someone is going astray, he tells you, don't judge me. When people are going against the word of God, they will tell you, don't judge. But here the Bible tells us about rebuking. Believers, we don't want to be rebuked. That's why we don't make any, import, any impact in our generation. Because we are not ready to be rebuked. Look at people like Peter. Peter was rebuked by Apostle Paul. And this is the power of the word of God. People are ready to be rebuked. But nowadays, there is so much the, uh, theatric in churches. Preachers are making jokes with miracles fabricated miracles and no one is ready to rebuke them and the bible exists to rebuke rebuking error correcting false nowadays people are chasing cloud everywhere even in churches they're chasing cloud musicians are chasing cloud preachers are chasing clouds uh, gospel ministers the djs the radio presenters, they are chasing clouds. And there the Bible says, the Bible, Bible exists to correct the fault and give the structure for the right living. Other versions say, holy living. The Bible is to guide you, is to convict you, and enable you live a holy and righteous life. Allow me now to, dwell, to delve into the structure of the Bible. The structure of the Bible. The major section of the Bible. The Old and the New Testament. These are the major uh, division of the Bible. The Old Testament. What is the Old Testament? When you are told, read out the book is found in the Old Testament. What is the Old Testament? Old Testament simply... Uh, refer to the agreement, the covenant, the old covenant that God had with the children of Israel. 
It is the God original covenant with man, the Old Testament. And the New Testament now is the record, the new covenant made by God through Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the ink of the New Testament, the new covenant that God had entered with man in the New Testament is through Jesus Christ. That's why we cannot divorce Jesus from the word of God. The whole Bible talks about Jesus. The Old Testament tells us, prophesies about the coming of Jesus. They talk about Jesus. All the Bible. There's someone who was telling me over the weekend that you know you because you, serve, you worship on Sunday will not go to heaven. Even the Safina that uh, Noah made the ark that it was on, it was a Sabbath. And I told him this one they represent Christ, the Savior of the world. How the ark saved the people is the same way how Jesus saved a sinful mankind. It is a type of Christ. So when you don't have knowledge, you will be arguing out of ignorance. So Jesus is the, is the one who perfects the New Testament, uh, which is called the New Covenant between God and his people. The Old Testament was a covenant between God and man. This book that concerned about restoring sinful man to the righteous God. For people to have a perfect relationship with God. God had to enter a new contract, a new covenant, a new agreement with human beings. And that's why it is called the Old Testament and the New Testament. They are the covenant that God entered with the children of Israel and the New Testament with the people through Jesus Christ. This covenant, there is one thing that is a unifier. It's called the blood. All this covenant, the blood was shed. In the Old Testament, they were shedding animals through animal sacrifices. These were to atone for people, to amend people's sin. To make them brushes, to help them for their sin to be forgiven, animal had to be slaughtered. This was uh, how the covenant was being sealed. But in the New Testament, that is Jesus is the sacrifice. That's why everywhere you are being told to toy the bill, to toy the bill, you know that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. Old Testament, people were giving animals, animals without blemish, animals without fault, animals that were full with no deformity. But in the New Testament, Jesus became the sacrifice. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a final sacrifice for sin was made. That's why you need to appreciate the work of Jesus. Nowadays, you don't have to carry animals. You don't have to carry cattle. You don't have to carry sheep. You don't have to carry goat. You don't have to carry dove to go to church. Because Jesus carried the shame for us. He became a curse for us. By appreciating the work of the cross, you are being saved. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice to cement the new covenant. That's why it's very important every day to thank Jesus for the work he did for us. He held everything together. The book of uh, 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 Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, when you go down, talks about that Jesus is the image of the invisible God who held everything together. Jesus held everything together. Everything is held through him. That's why you need to appreciate the work of Jesus. Allow me now to break, uh, to have a breakdown of the Old Testament. The book, uh, I will be just going to tell you what the book signifies. 
I want you to appreciate the Bible. I want you to appreciate why you need to appreciate the Bible. That boy spoke foolishly. That Bible is a wrong book. It's, a, it's not a, a real book. Because he just converted and he doesn't even understand Islam. He doesn't understand Arabic. I understand Arabic. He doesn't understand. He just follow like sheep, godless sheep, because he doesn't understand. I'm telling you what is written, what is verified, what is authentic, what without error, the word of God the, that lived the test of time. The word of God is power of God. Reveal God to us. The book of... Uh, let us now go to the books that are found in the Old Testament. We have the five books. We call them the book of law. Or you can call them pentatitude. Pent means five. Pentatitude. This book records creation. History of man. How God raised up a nation of Israel as his people through which he could reveal himself to the nations of the world. God used the nation of Israel to show how he works, how he forgives sin, how he embraces people when they repent. God used uh, the nation of Israel as a sample for people to appreciate his work. We have the five books, the book of law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They fall under the book of law or pentateuch. Here we have the Ten Commandments, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers. You should appreciate that the book of Numbers records the 40 years that the children of Israel uh, sojourned or lived in the wilderness. We have the book of history, uh, history books. History books, they run from Joshua through Esther, they record the history, a thousand years of the history of God's people, the tribe, the nation of Israel, 1,000 years. They are captured in the book of history from the book of Joshua through the book of Esther. Uh, you need to understand one thing. The Bible talks of what is important. What is a major event? So, this book of history uh, do not record everything, but they, they record what we call major events. And important to know the result of both following and ignoring God's law. They show what happened when people ignore the laws of God. And when people appreciate the work of God, how they are rewarded, the book of history. We have another set of books called poetic books. They go through the book of Job to Song of Solomon. These books, when you are interpreting them, you need to be very careful because they are poetic. You know when you are talking about poetic, there are things you need to understand about the book of poetic there is a lot of rhetoric. There is a lot of languages. You need to understand the metaphors. You need to understand a lot of things that this book refers to. It's very important to understand these books because they need wisdom. They need you to have a special understanding of literature, of grammar, because they are books that are poetic. There are books that have similes, they have metaphors, they, are, they have ironies. You have to understand when you are interpreting these books of poetic, they need you to be more sober so that you will not uh, misinterpret these scriptures. We have the book of prophecy. The book of prophecy... Hmm. They talk about the major and the minor prophet. And you need to know that all these prophets are equally important. The difference of the major and the minor is the length of the book. The length of the book is what brings the difference. 
All these books are prophetic messages from God to his people about the future events, the event that took place. Like when you read the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah, they talk about how people will be taken to uh, uh, captivity in Babylon. And they also talk about even the Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they will find themselves eunuch in the Babylonian system. All these are prophecies that happened. So it's very important to understand these books. Very, very key to understand them. They give prophecy. They talk about future events. People love prophets because they tell you about the future. But some are not telling you from God. Some are using spirits. They are using occult systems to tell you about the future events. The book of Isaiah chapter 47 tells us to be very cautious about future uh, events. People are telling you about month and month what will happen to you. You need to be very cautious. And you have to understand there are books that in this uh, prophetic book there is also a prophetic book in the New Testament. There is also a historic book in the New Testament. I'll be telling you all those as we'll be progressing. There are stories about the history books. There are those that happen and there are those that will happen. There are still others to happen. So you need to be very alert. Be alert, spiritually alert. So that when they happen, you, you will not be caught off guard. Allow us now to go to the New Testament. We like now to have the breakdown of the New Testament. We have what we call synoptic gospel. Synoptic gospel. Synoptic gospel talks about Matthew through the book of John. They talk about the, the life of Jesus, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. The four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are talking about the gospel. Gospel is good news about Jesus Christ. Resurrection, life, death, and resurrection and assertion of Jesus to heaven. There's another book in the New Testament called the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a historic book. It records the story of the apostles. The 30 years after the uh, assertion of Jesus. The book of Acts is the historic book in the New Testament. It shows the church began, how the church began, and how it, uh, it fulfilled Jesus Christ, the great commission of spreading the gospel to the world. These books show us now how to do it. It is a book that shows us how the great commission can be achieved, how the great commission can be, fulfill, can be fulfilled with excellence. The book of Acts. The book of Acts, there are two major characters that you need to understand. This book carries the story of Apostle Paul, who has, who was, he has been featured very heavy, and also uh, Peter and other apostles. Also in the book of Acts is where we know about Jesus' assertion to heaven. It's where we know about the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's recorded in the book of Acts chapter 2. Very important. Acts chapter 1 is about Jesus' assertion. And now we are talking about the seven deacons are there. Stephen Stoning is there. The Philip is there. There are a lot that is recorded in the book of Acts. And I would like you to know, as a believer... You need to find time and read the book of Acts because this book of Acts shed light on the episodes of Apostle Paul and other episodes of the Apostles Peter and John. It tells you what is happening, what is happening in those books. So it's very important to find time and read the entire book of Acts. It will give you a lot of light, a lot of insight of understanding the episodes. Another set of books in the New Testament is called the Episodes. These are guidelines 
to the churches that Apostle Paul wrote to those churches. Uh, he wrote to Church of Rome, Church of Ephesus, Church of Colossae, Church of Philippi, Church of Thessalonica. He wrote a lot of letters for them to understand. And there are also other believers who wrote, like Peter, we have James, James and Jude, they are real brothers of Jesus Christ. They are people who understand Jesus. That's why they are record. I told you, when the uh, Bible was being put together, they were looking at verified and authentic records. So the records of Jude and the record of James were accepted because these records were from people who were closer to Jesus. People who were who followed Jesus, people who dined with Jesus, Joe, uh, Jude and James, they also wrote letters. There are people who dis, uh, they did not approve the ministry of Jesus, but later they accepted and they were converted and they fought so much, they labored so much, they gave their best in the ministry after Jesus' assertion. Therefore, I'd like to advise you preachers, don't always Feel down when people don't approve your ministry. Jude and James did not support Jesus. Jude and James did not appreciate the work of Jesus. But later after the death of Jesus, they realized that surely Jesus was God. Jude and James, they had deeper revelation of Jesus after Jesus' assertion. So don't feel that because people don't appreciate what I'm doing, I need to give up. No. Jesus showed that on, and you need also to so, a soldier on. Even Jesus said, a, a, a prophet is not welcome at home, in his home. He was referring to these brothers. They were not acceptance. They did not accept his ministry. They were rebellious. They were repelling to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've, I've said the episodes. We have the episodes of Paul called Pauline. Rome, from the book of Romans to the book of Hebrews. Then we have James. We have, uh, we have people like Peter, the apostle of Jesus. We have John, apostle that Jesus loved. And we have J uh, John, is the same one who wrote the book of Revelation. Where I, I, I'm going, Revelation is the only prophetic book in the, Old, uh, in the New Testament. It's the only book of prophecy in the New Testament. And this book shows the last, the final victory of Jesus and his people. I love this. The book of Revelation brings out the final victory of Jesus and his people. There are churches, they avoid to read the book of Revelation. There are people who fear to even open the book of Revelation. But the book of Revelation depict or remove or brings out the final victory of Jesus and his people. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Shed more on that. There are other divisions of the Bible. We can call it the spiritual division. There are two major spiritual divisions to God's word. This is what I promised one day to preach about and it has brought, uh, God has allowed it to be found here. I call it the milk of the word and the meat of the word. The milk of the word and the milk of the word. The milk of the word is the basic truth easily understood. The basic truth where people say that, oh, they understand it shallowly. This is the milk of the word. Nowadays in our churches, they give people the milk of the word. They don't give people the real word. They just want to pamper you. We have become motivational speakers. We just want to pamper people. We don't give them the, the meat of the word. And the meat of the word is the deeper things, the deeper revelation of God's word, which brings spiritual maturity. I love this which brings spiritual maturity, the deep secrets of God. When you read the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, you will 
understand what the Bible talks about the milk of the word and the milk of the word and the milk of the word. Hebrews chapter 5. I love this book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews shows the difference between Judaism and Christianity, the superiority, the power of Christianity over Judaism. There are people who are following more Judaism laws than Christ. They tell you, Sabbath, Sabbath. When you read the book of uh, Colossians chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 16, Apostle Paul is saying it's stupidity. Judging people based on days, on festivals, is stupidity. That is purely Judaism. Christianity is about grace, the love of Christ. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13, the Bible says, Anyone who has drink milk is still a child without any experience in the matter of the right or wrong. Hallelujah. Verse 14, Solid food, on the other hand, is for the adults who through the practice are able to distinguish between good and evil. Churches, they ordain gays. They join lesbians in holy matrimony because they are drinking milk. They don't know wrong or right. The, the Bible position about homosexuality. But when you are drinking meat, you know how to dress. You know how to speak. You know how to worship. You know how to do the things of God. Because you are eating the right solid food. Food for the elder. Food for the mature uh, believers. When you read the book of Peter, First Peter, first episode of Apostle Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, Even so, men will follow their moral ways, and because of what they do, others will speak evil of the way of the truth. Hallelujah. They don't understand. They go their evil ways, immoral ways, because they are consuming milk of the word. When you are consuming meat of the word, you will know how to operate. You will know how to fight spiritual battles. You will know how to walk in the, in, the, in the spirit, not walking on the flesh. Because you are eating the right meal. There is a division that we call Rema and Logos. I love this. Rema and Logos. Logos refers to the preaching, written word of God. But the rhema, it is a spoken word of God. What I'm doing now is a rhema word. Logos is a written word of God, the Bible. You need to combine both. You need to apply both in our lives. The division of the Bible, rhema and logos. These are Greek words used in the Bible for the word of God. Unity of the Bible. The Bible is united in content. All the writers wrote with harmony. They are inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Bible is written in themes. All scriptures are centered on Jesus. What I told you earlier. The Old Testament tells about the story of, the, uh, of Jesus. The Old Testament tells us prepares for the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. The New Testament tells us how it happened. I told you earlier. The diversity of the word. The Bible has variety. The Bible is written in different moods. Some portion uh, expresses joy, while others uh, reflect sorrows. There are different versions, translations, paraphrases. The Bible is written in three languages. Hebrew, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, the Aram, Aramaic, you will find that Aramaic was the Persian language. The book of Daniel, Nehemiah was written in Aramaic, and the Greek, the New Testament, after the Alexander the Great, it's where we understand the Greek language. When Alexander the Great did what we call Hellenizing, he made the Greek to be the official language of the world. He Hellenized 
the Greek culture into the people. That's why the New Testament happened after Alexander the Great. They were speaking Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek, but the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic. The purpose of the word, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, I've said earlier, the Bible is to bring belief in the holiness, in the gospel. It's to cleanse, to cast out demons, to give assurance of salvation, to give hope, to bring healing. It's the spirit and life. It is a weapon. Luke chapter 4. The rule of divine authority. We accept the Bible as the final authority. The rule of liter literally interpretation. To interpret the Bible literally. The rule of contextual consideration. These are the rules that govern the Bible interpretation. Every verse of the Bible should be studied in its context. The places that the Bible talks about the world. The world. The world is interpreted differently. There is the world of people. There is the world of social system. There is the world that God talks about in the creation. So you have to understand the Bible in different contexts. There is the flesh used in different forms. So you have to understand every verse in a different context. You have to ask yourself question when reading the Bible. Who is the author? What is being said? To whom? The audience? The church? The Jews? The Gentiles? Individuals? Like when you read the book of Luke and Acts, Apostle Paul write to Theophilus. Individual. When you read the book of uh, Philemon, Apostle Paul wrote to Philemon. Individual. The book of Timothy. The book of Titus, it writes to individual people. Even the book of, I think, of John, that is somewhere John is addressing to an individual. The book of Revelation is written to seven churches. So you have to understand that it's, the book of John is writing to someone called Gaius. Gaius. So there are verses written to individual, to Gentiles. The Gentiles are people of the world, people who are not from uh, uh, origin of Jews. The purpose of the passage, when was it said? You have, there are rules that you have to understand that I've been speaking of. The rule of first mention, the rule of repetition, the rule of cumulative revelation. You have to understand all this. It will be very important. At this juncture, I'd like to take a, a break then we'll come back and I'll be explaining now what the Bible entails, the New Testament, the Old Testament, those books, what they entails, the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And I believe you will be blessed because God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to reveal, he wants to reveal himself to you. That's why he gave us the Bible. And you have to appreciate the Bible. And God will do you good. Let us believe and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we magnify your name for your goodness and your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the teaching of bibliology. And we believe we'll continue to eliminate our mind, oh Jehovah. Holy Spirit, may you continue to empower us. Holy Spirit, may you continue to guide us. Holy Spirit, may you continue to be our help in the time of need. We love you and we exalt your name. Jehovah, bless our nation, bless the work of our hands, bless the land that we till, give us favor, let your hand rest upon our lives, O oh Jehovah. Protect us against any harm and danger, protect us, O oh God, against daily diseases, protect us against the pagans, O oh Jehovah. The way you protected your servant Paul against the pagan of Judea, O oh King of glory. Let your name be magnified, O oh God. Open the gates of the cities for us, O oh Jehovah. Let your name be praised, O oh Jehovah. Let Almighty Father, your name be magnified, O oh God, because you are the great I am, O King of glory. We worship you and we exalt your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Thank you very much for your time. I believe you are blessed. Jehovah God is continuing to do good, to work with you, to cause his face to shine upon you, to favor you, and to flavor your life. My name is Sonyango Eric. 
It is a great moment once again to tell you where we are. We are located at Mukuru Kwareli Market by National Serial Board. Adjacent to Donham Railway Station. Proceed there, there is a market. We are at suite number 245. You'll find us there and we'll be blessed. If you like to watch this video and other videos, they are very much available in YouTube. Eric Sublime, Eric of E R I C K Sublime. You'll find all those videos. Kindly like, share, subscribe, comment, and you'll be blessed abundantly, abundantly, abundantly. There is a blessing in giving. This is a service like other services, and God blesses the hand that giveth. There is a blessing of giving. There is a favor of giving. That's why Jesus did not discount or refuse the offering of that uh, poor widow. Because he knew there is a blessing attached to giving. When Jesus wanted to wash Simon Peter's feet and Peter refused, Jesus rebuked him because he doesn't know the blessing that come from someone who give, who give service or anything good. That is a blessing to the giver. It's good to give than to receive because there is a blessing attached to giving. I hereby welcome you. May you stand with us. May you enable us to reach more people. And this is also blessing the kingdom of God. You can do so through Mpesa. 0725102528 is our basket number 0725102528 and God will do you good if you have any prayer request you have any comment or there is something troubling you just drop uh, just uh, send us a text or give us a call 0725102528 and surely we shall respond to your need and God will do you good. May God bless you. May God protect you. May God bless the work of your hands. May God protect your family. Even as you enjoy this festive season, may God protect you. May God give you all your desire. And may God make this here to be the best because the end of the matter is better than the beginning. Expect the best that the year is offering at the end because God word is perfect. God has said the end of the matter is better than the beginning. So God is going to make this year better as better than other months because God is a faithful God. May God bless you, protect you. I love you with the love of Christ. My name is Onyango Eric. Bye-bye. Wow.